Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Today is the man child. Okay, so today for review, going to go over the Masters Universe, Masterverse, New Eternia, Thunder Punch He Man. It's part of the Wave 13 series. Yeah, really cool. We get a Thunder Punch He-Man in line. I think he's a favorite with a lot of fans as far as He-Man variants go. Um, I remember getting Thunder Punch He-Man in the vintage days as a kid, probably around Christmas or my birthday or something, and having those ring caps, you know, that went in the backpack into, into those days. And I remember snapping the waist, popping out in the house. That sound was so loud and the smoke coming out. It my do I had a dog named Bear or something, you know. That dog went nuts and almost went through the wall, just how loud that thing was. Um... Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that anymore with Thunder Punch He-Man figures. The Origins Thunder Punch He-Man didn't have that. And I don't think the Masterverse one does as well. Looks like he has like a little ring kind of mock cap set up in the back of the backpack. Once we get him out of package, we'll check it out. So yeah, we have some cool art going on here. Right? Left-hand side, Thunder Punch He-Man. Punch with his thunder effects. Across the face, the Barbarian Skeletor, which is neat. You can see I have my Barbarian Skeletor sitting in the background here on a bone throne. But different head on. Um, surprised they, sh they put Barbarian Skeletor with the art. I would think it'd be the new Attorney of Battle Armor Skeletor, which should be coming out in the next couple months. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm waiting for him too. It's another awesome figure I'm looking forward to. Um, so he yeah, obviously has a new Thunder Punch He-Man armor on that looks different from the classics and, uh, Origins, but reminiscent of what it should look like. Um, I know he comes with some other effects and different sword stuff like that. The most important part is now he has a new head designer sculpt. It looks to me as the head that came off the new Attorney of Faker, which I think it looks good in package. Um, better than the promotional art images. And now here's a quick look at the art or images on back of the box. So yeah, we can see our Thunder Punch He-Man figure holding up one of his uh, Thunder Punch effects, we'll call it. Now you notice too in this promotional or artistic image, it looks like a different head sculpt compared to what's in that box. The one in the box... Is a lot better now. I don't like that. I just don't like how it comes out. And I think that's what they show in the promotional images. It just looks too hard in the face or something. I don't know. Maybe it was an early sculpt. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm happy what it came with so far. We have, uh, looks like a Hordax Coliseum or something going on in the background. You can see Hordax statue, Hordax head laying there. He comes with some spare, sort of two thunder punch effects for you get a, with the left and right arm, which is neat because the classics, I think it only came with one, just like the origin, so you get two. Um, has the iconic, is, uh, that shield, it, it looks shiny, but I don't know if it's vac metal, once again, when we get it out, we'll, out of the box, we'll check it out, looks like he also comes with a gold power sword, um, I like that, but it would have also been neat if he came with the translucent gold sword, which I do have a, um, custom one that I put on the Origins, I'll bring that in later on when I compare the Origins one, and then drop it down, so the backpack does open up, and you have some kind of mechanical, ring setup going with the caps but again i don't think you can use actual caps i think it's just like a mock setup and here's a quick look at the bio for this new thunder punch he man you want to pause and read that and then dropping down these roll four figures as part of the wave 13 series and here's some additional art on the left hand side of the box looking from the window and so it's just kind of a crossover piece of the shield and a sword inside the shield with the thunder punch he man in the front but it's pretty neat because we get snake mountain with the gate on top and it looks like the snake that giant snake coming in for attack with the thunder punch he man and then here's the art on the right-hand side of the box looking from window. And just more images of Thunder Punch He-Man. Yeah, punch in the ground with his Thunder Punch effect and the overall head design. And now here's a quick overall look of Thunder Punch He-Man out of package with all the accessories. And now taking a closer look at Thunder Punch He-Man's head and face sculpt. Um, I really like it. I think it came out great. You know, it's uh, yeah, kind of a mix between... Reminds me of something between like the classics and vintage kind of mixed together. Something like that little bit of its own design but i think it came out great a lot better than those promotional images eyes look great the skin tone's really cool of course with the body i like the hair um as far as the articulation like all the heads right we go look left to right look all the way down and back as right, so you can see all the details spin it around check out the hair hairs yeah awesome sculpting i like that darkish um dirty blonde color instead of like overly bright like the origins did with the newer figures now real quick i'm going to bring in just took the new attorney of faker head off the faker obviously quick comparison so yeah it, it looks like to me it's definitely this faker head 
but um yeah painted for a he-man so i like that and yeah what they did with it and put it on this figure and again later on we changed some different heads around in this body so moving down to the chest and buck area and of course the most important part the uh thunder punch armor yeah it looks really cool you know i like what they did as far as the design from masterverse um it's it has you know it's just it's casted in a like a red color you can see like his other accessories on his arms which we'll get into has it's a silver has silver paint on the h he and then silver's paint around the outer edge um a little bit sloppy in certain areas so basically it's all cast at red and he just paints the silver is what i'm saying and got some extra buttons to stop painting there from what you can see you can see all the circuitry or the technical piece of sculpt on the top and bottom sort of like the classics had now i'm going to turn around for me let's take a look at the backpack so yeah there's your iconic uh thunder punch backpack or where the capsule go in now this does it does articulate right opens up like that check it out pretty cool has a turn dial um paint homage and it does click going back to the vintage one where you would how you would set and wind the caps so as you turn that dial you can see the little in that little um piece in there it spins with it it's kind of hard to grab but it's neat that it clicks too now i'm going to bring in this set of yeah, mock kind of the mock caps I'll call. Let me take a look at that. There's ring caps, I used to call them. And pretty much when I see it, looks like it's okay, just gonna fit down like that. And the open side faces up. That's where the powder would be in those old school caps, which you can still find them on Amazon online today. Has some neat circuitry and stuff sculpted in there. And then when you so now when you turn this dial, sorry, it's hard to grab, like hold this figure. There you go. It it will spin around. So I'm going to shut this, and now, yeah, spin it. And you can actually see it. There's an opening. You can see the caps rotating left to right. But, again, there's no action feature that I can see where you're going to put actual caps going to snap. And the other figure was set up where you would twist, I think it was at the waist. And then when a cap snapped, it would um, you'd have a mechanical setting would pop each cap, and you'd have to turn it and repeat the process with the punch. And that was the thunder punch effect. It didn't come with any, you know, effects on the hands at the time, the vintage one anyway. So, you know, it's a pretty cool setup that they give you. Um, yeah, it would have been neat to make it to where you can buy third-party caps and use it. But I don't see that today. Even though these are being marketed to adult collectors, you know. Um, all right, anyway. So, to remove this armor, right? So, we went over the action feature, how it comes apart. It looks like there's two snaps. So, I'm going to pop the one on the right side. It comes apart easy, too, which is cool. And we'll break the one on the left. And then with both of those buckles popped off, it looks like you can move this over the head, but I think I have to take the head off. So I'm just going to move that. And then with the head off, I can remove this backpack right over the body. And that was a little closer look with the backpack off the body. So it's a pretty hard plastic here, but really flexible. Again, I like the way these snap come on and off. You know, you don't have to fight them. We already know how this comes apart by pulling it. How the rings, oh, I fell off, take that out. But just the overall design, you can see all the mechanical features and stuff or sculpting on the back. And now bringing him in and once again with the backpack off. So yeah, of course I put the head back on. Um, so yeah, you're getting the larger chest and buck again, going back to the Revolution He-Man, which I, I would hope so. It wouldn't make sense if they went back to the regular He-Man or Triclops buck. That's ridiculous to wear the, um, so the new attorney of Faker, kind of bring him in, put the head back on, obviously. Yeah, he had the smaller, typical He-Man buck. So it's it's kind of like this He-Man, but with the armor off, has a smaller buck. You know, it's... um. It's not that noticeable unless the armor's not on. So it's it's coolly upgraded this one. Um with the armor off, just gonna go over your articulation real quick. So yeah, he has the ab crunch. You can spin it that right. Look all the way down forward. He can spin at the waist. Um doesn't seem to really be hindered too much with the backpack on. But let me put this back on. Let's test the articulation with it. Okay, so yeah, it made sense to put the backpack on. I just wanted to take it off, show the details, and confirm it's a larger chest. So again, with the articulation with this backpack on at least with the ab crunch let's see he can all right he can still go all the way forward and um twist back and forth so it doesn't really hinder anything right we'll leave it on for now um so moving on to the arms now he has um yeah typical masterverse style arms still with those cuts um kind of wish he had the larger biceps like that snout of spout figure did from mattel creations but that figure has a single joint where this still has the dual joint which a lot of people like and you do get better articulation yeah, it's a mix for me, but I get why they do it. Um, so yeah, now you get these mechanical uh, kind of exoskeleton articulated like bicep and wrist pieces that the shield is going to go on. And I guess it helps them 
you get more stability for the thunder punch effect or something like that mechanically. Um, so you can see these are separate pieces. Now they do, they go up to the bicep. So as far as the articulation with these on, we go up with the arm all the way down. We go forward, back. I already showed you can bend up at the face. So you have a lot of flexibility. These are unhinged pieces. So let me see the elbow. Okay, it can bend all the way in. All right, all the way out, as we said. I already said bicep swivel moves with this. Um, so moving down, you have... So they're the same on the left and right side. Um, this is where the shield's going to plug in. It's the whole idea of these, which we'll get to in a little while. It's... Um, yeah, and obviously, there's a left and right. You know, they're different outer for the left and right side of your arm. So going back to the right, he has moving down... He has these wrist bracers, red ones like Thunder Punch, he always did. Now they do spin, so they come off like these pieces should. He also comes with two semi-closed hands, which spin and let me see. These do these go up and down? Alright, look at that. So this one goes up and down with the sword on a hinge joint, and then the left side goes in and out and spins. Alright, it's interesting. And then taking a look at the left arm real quick. So the articulation, and as I already mentioned, this piece is all the same. How it can spin articulate side. This face out, this faces out for the left side, the left arm, this face out to the right. So I don't think when you take these off, you can mix them around. It wouldn't make sense. Or, you know, the plugs will be in the inside. Um, so to take everything off, let's go back to the right arm. So to remove the hand, I'm just going to pull that off first. And then jump back to the left side, I'm going to remove that hand embracer as well. And now here's a quick look at both hands and his red bracers off the arm. So yeah, I already mentioned the right arm goes up and down in a hinge joint, holding the sword, saying I have the power or something. This one goes in and out. And then these are two wrist bracers that do come off, which are cool. And now moving back to He-Man once again with the hands and the two bracers off. So yeah, I'm trying to break apart these mechanical uh, piece, enhanced pieces on his arms. So it looks like these hinge pieces, they pop. Like, okay, yeah, like that. You turn the other arm around, you can snap this one off as well. And then with those two ends off, you can slide this right over the forearm. And then moving up to the bicep, just grab this. You might have to heat it up, but it should pull right down like this. Straighten the arm out and it should slide right over everything like so. And then jump back to the left arm. So I already popped the two tabs. I right, pull that off and just pull this piece right down the same way I did with the right side. And here's a little closer look at those exo enhancement pieces off the arm. So you obviously want to put back together when I left apart. So you can see again, how when I put it back together, how it articulates. Um, and they are marked left and right side on both pieces. So like this is for the left arm. It has an L. You can see down on the inside for the bicep piece. The forearm piece also has an L. And then the right side is R for the same thing. So just to give you an idea. It does sort of matter what how they go on. It's just a better look at them. And they're pretty soft and flexible and easy to take on and off for the most part. And now here's another look with Thunder Punch He-Man once again with his main armor on. I just put the both wrist bracers and hands on without those mechanical um, exoskeleton pieces to go, you know, to be more traditional how Thunder Punch he Man was always set up. But the only issue now, the way his shield is set up, which we're going to get into soon, you can't use it, um, you know, with that set up. But I just want to show that if people want to set them up like that. All right, so I put these pieces back on the arms because that's how he's set up and that's how we're going to use them, right? We have the main armor on, I have the caps in the back for fun. So I'm just going to move down and um, finish up the articulation. Uh, and these pieces too, when you put them on, you don't have to separate them from here. It is, they are, it is easier. Of course, you have to remove the hand, the wrist bracer, but you can straighten your arm up out and snap these together, leave them together and then slide the whole thing up, lock it to the bicep, you know, up to the forearm and put the hand stuff back on. So I just wanted to shout that out, but it's not necessary. So I already said you can twist at the waist when we went over the ab stuff. Yeah, it just has a typical new attorney style belt loincloth that a lot of these figures come with. Or he man like Viking he man stuff came with. This is cast in a um yeah, shiny gold or flat gold color, right? Front and back. Typical loin the longer loin cloth, same thing, you know, flexible it is, nothing new. Um, typical masterverse style legs, as far as the articulation on mine, go all the way out with a split, go forward, kick back, bend all the way up at the knee, has the thigh cut. And does he have the drop joints too now? A lot of these figures, yep. He also has those newer style drop joints like Leech and Cyclone had. That's pretty cool. Um, so I'm starting to see that with a lot of these newer figures. It's just better for articulation. Makes them taller. You can push them and make them shorter. Um, all right, so the thigh cut. Bend at the knee. He has in just a typical style He-Man Masterverse boots. They can spin. If you want to heat them up, remove the peg, take them off, change them out with some other boots you can. Um, yeah, so the big white furry piece up top, lacing, the whole deal. And the foot can go up, down. 
and rock side to side as far as articulation. You know, on the other side of the leg is all the same. And now, taking a look at Thunder Punch He-Man's weapons and accessories. So, of course, they give him his iconic power sword. It's casted in a metallic gold color, solid gold color, which is pretty cool. I like that. Again, it would have been neat to have a translucent yellow one like some of the versions of Thunder Punch He-Man figures came with. And others came with a gold sword. Has a white wrap around the handle. So, it's a really cool design. And this is a quick comparison with the 40th anniversary He-Man sword. The San Diego Comic-Con version, it's metallic. And then a retail version got a plastic one that looked like this. But you can see it's basically the same sword. Of course, cast it in gold. So he does get that, which is neat. And then he also comes with a pair of punching fists for the left and right side with the hinge joints that go in and out. I never use these, as I always mention, but you do get them. And then for his next accessory or accessories, he comes with a pair of, uh, yeah, the thunder punch effects that can go on the left and right arm. Now they both have an identical design as far as sculpt. Right, so it doesn't matter. It seems like whether what in other words, it's not a right and left one. Um, yeah, pretty cool detail. Right, it's uh, the cast in a translucent yellow yellow color, like there's some kind of yeah, the energy blasting because he's punching so hard or fast it breaks the sound barrier. <laughs> it's creating this uh, energy effect in space and time. Uh, yeah, really cool. Now I want to bring in the origins one. So here's the origins. I thought maybe they just used the same one, but now the origins one is actually different. Has a different, um, just, yeah, it's sculpted, overall different. Same type of casting. Um, and then you can use this on a Masterverse figure, but it is a lot smaller inside the Origins one for their fist, where these effects are larger. And then for his last accessory, he comes with that iconic uh, oval-shaped technical shield that the um, Thunder Punch He-Man always came with, going back to the vintage. Yeah, really awesome design. Has the H of He sculpted outwards, painted. Right, so there's the back. You can see it's going to plug onto this wrist bracers, which we're going to do pretty soon. But um, so it's cast in just that flat gray color, like you see with a lot of accessories and weapons with the Masterverse series, sometimes Origins. But yeah, I would have liked this um, with Vac Metal. I think that would have been a lot better and you know more true to the vintage classics and the Origins design. It's not terrible. I know Masterverse is doing something different, um, so they didn't do that, obviously. Now, you can also take your mock cap, ring cap, right? And going like going back to what the Vintage did. See that? You can snap it on the inside. And it would hold. So the Vintage would basically hold the ring of caps. So, something like that on the inside. Their design was a little bit different from what I remember. And then, of course, you can also take the power sword. Right? And it'll just go from the top piece. And here's the bottom part holder. And um, it's pretty much the overall setup. Okay, so jumping back over to Thunder Punch He-Man once again. Let's start setting him up with his weapons and accessories. So I'm just going to plug the shield in for now to the left side of the gauntlet. Right, so you can see how that plugs in like that. And then with that plugged in the arm, as far as the articulation, it can just really spin around. It, it can't, you know, it's the wrist bracer can't really spin, but you don't need it now because the bicep can move the arm. You have all this head articulation to, you know, move the shield in position in defense if you wanted to. And now I'm just going to put his power sword in the right hand. And now there's a quick look with that setup. And now, of course, I just put the shield in the right hand on that bracer and the sword in the left. So if you want to set them up like that. And now removing the shield and sword out of the hands, I'm going to put this sword back in the shield like so. And plug it in back to the left side. I always like the shield for some reason on the left side to me because I'm right-handed. And let's check out those uh, thunder punch effects. And now bringing in one of the thunder punch effects, I'm just going to push it onto the right arm. And now just a quick look with that set up. So yeah, just have one of the energy thunder punch effects on the right hand as he's punching from that side. And again, put the shield and the sword on the left as he, so he can hold it like that. Pretty cool. So now I'm going to remove the shield from the bracer and check this out. It can actually push into the back of that handle. You can leave the sword on it so it can still hold the, you know, the sword and shield on the back. We'll keep the one thunder punch effect on the right side. And now put the this one on the left. And now does look with that setup. So yeah, we have the dual punching effects, obviously, on each arm. It's getting ready to punch at the same time, do some real damage, seal the shield and sword on the back. Um, now I am rotating, you gotta be careful. He is heavy with this setup. He wants to fall backwards, depending on the joints. But yeah, it's an awesome concept that they set him up with, you know, the um two different punching effects are right? included too, and you could put the you know sword and shield on each uh, either arm. Um I didn't expect this. I didn't notice this first that you can plug in the back. That's pretty neat. And the other thing too is now these do fit on the semi-open hands, but it's probably a little better with the punching fists, I think. But you didn't need them. Again, I don't usually use those, but yeah, that's really awesome. I like that. 
Okay, so moving on with some comparisons and mixing and matching of parts. So once again, I set up the Thunder Punch He-Man with, um, I just kept one of the punch effects on the right side. I put the shield and the sword on the left. And we're going to leave the armor and everything on. So, of course, here's a quick comparison between the new Thunder Punch He-Man and the Revolution He-Man, which, again, it's the same body style and everything aside. The belt, one cloth, stuff like that is different. Boots are different colors. And, of course, he has all his armor on. Um, now, I'm not going to switch to this to this figure because again they're the same body style so i had the belts and loincloths i just mentioned but let's change the heads around on these two figures and see what that looks like and now here's a quick look with that thunder punch he-man head on a revolution body so if you like that head on this body or this particular style with the cross armor on you can do that um yeah the skin tones match good and it looks cool again i really like this head something different now of course here's a look with that revolution head on the thunder punch body or the setup and yeah, that looks good as well. So if you like that head better on that Revolution figure, what should I do? I really like this head sculpt over the original He-Man that came out four years ago. You can do that. Articulates well, and even the tones in the skin, you know, match the overall body, which um, looks like the skin tones. All right, so this Thunder Punch He-Man is, under my light, it, it does have a different shade. It kind of looks darker. They're the same. This has like a tan, oh, that just fell like spray on it where this one's a little bit lighter so you can see the difference between the two figures but the heads still work um just because of the way you know the wash and a different on a skin of the faces on on both heads from what i can see okay so for the next comparison i want to bring in my custom uh revelation he-man setup so pretty much this he-man was i want to say it was the first he-man that came out but the only thing i i did with the first he-man is i removed the loincloth the bracers and the boots, um, and I switched it over to a Viking He-Man body. I had a spare one because uh, the skin tones were, you know, they were more tan where the first He-Man was yellow. I didn't like the head sculpt. That's a custom vintage inspired head sculpt that works great on all the Masterverse He-Man figure, you know, the bodies that came from like Barbosa Customs, I think, on eBay. And I also put the axe in the battle armor on this body that came with the Revolution He-Man in the background. So I keep the cross armor on him. Because he has a larger chest, and he don't. He has a standard Triclops or early Masterverse chest. But what's cool with the battle armor off the Revolution He-Man, it makes it look like he has a bigger chest. Because I didn't want to buy two Revolution He-Mans, and I like this, the, the chest, you know, the bigger chest better. Just like Thunder Punch He-Man has. Anyway, so I'm not going to switch armors around because this is designed for the bigger chest. But it will fit the smaller one, just like the battle armor goes. It's, it's still a He-Man body. I'm not going to focus on that. But I did want to. I do want to switch the two heads around, see what that looks like, especially the vintage Aspire custom one on this uh, Thunder Punch He-Man body, and we'll put this one on this body. And now, there's a quick look with that Thunder Punch He-Man head on this uh, setup with the Revolution Battle Armor. And again, it doesn't matter if you have this He-Man, you had the Battle Armor on this body or the Cross Armor. I'm just kind of showing what this head looked like in a Battle Armor setup. And again, the Battle Armor makes him appear like he has a larger chest when he doesn't. So. Why I kept it on a figure, but yeah, it looks cool. You know, if you like the head, you can always put it on a custom um, He-Man with the battle armors I did or back on the Revolution He-Man. And now there's a look with that custom vintage inspired He-Man head on the Thunder Punch body or this overall setup. That, it looks awesome, I gotta say. Match as well, all the skin tones and stuff. And yeah, I feel a little bit of nostalgia going on or even with the differences or the designs in this new Masterverse figure. So, moving on with the next comparison and switching the heads around. Um, so, of course, this is the Masterverse movie He-Man body. You can see I keep off to the right now, part of my uh, wall of fame of figures. Um, I get questions sometimes when I do reviews with He-Man variants. Like, oh, you should have pulled that He-Man, put the heads on and off. And sometimes there's only so much I could do in a video. You know, I got to try to keep the time down and just, yeah, I, some things are necessary. Some things aren't. Um, now, I'm keeping the head off this He-Man at the moment because, you know, we know what that, you know, just, it's, an, it's a pain in the neck taking on and off. Anyway... Let's uh, switch heads around between these two and the different bodies and see what that looks like. And, oh, by the way, this is a custom Raymond Toys um, movie He-Man head, which is awesome. They made three different ones as far as expressions. I thought this was the best one. Every now and then you can find these on eBay for like you know, 25 bucks or so, but they're really great for this Masterverse body or the, any of the Masterverse He-Man figures from what I tried on so far. Now, once again, there's a look with the He-Man Thunder Punch head on that movie Masterverse body. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, it, it works for the most part. Some some tones in this body are a little darker. Shades anyway under my light. But, yeah, it could work. And it, it's different. Again, if you like that head and you picked up that figure, it could work with the cape and the whole setup. And, of course, now there's a look with that Raymond Toys movie He-Man custom head on the uh, Thunder Punch body. And, yeah, it looks awesome on that body. These Raymond Toy... Um, 
He-Man heads, they, they fit on anything. It almost doesn't matter the, col the color of the body, the way they were painted and shaded. Articulates good and everything. Awesome. That looks really cool when I set up. So next up, I'm going to bring in the 40th anniversary He-Man. Um, you know, a lot of people like him. A lot of people don't. Uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting design. I did like the head sculpt, but a lot of the wash on these figures, are, they were weird, you know? Especially the head on mine. And so, some were decent box from people I heard on, you know, in the comments anyway. Um, but again, let's switch heads around to start, see what that looks like between these two bodies. Okay, and there's a look at the Thunder Punch head on the 40th anniversary body. And, um... You know, it uh, it can work. It's just, um, yeah, it has the right tones because there's so many different, a couple different tones in this body as well. So it ain't bad. I think that skin color in this actually looks better than the head I, it came with. I mean, look how off those tones are. It's like too white and has a weird wash in it, but it works. And now, of course, there's our 40th anniversary head on a Thunder Punch body. And yeah, it looks good. Very vintage inspired. But again, because the wash on my face and how it's painted, um, yeah, so often the body, if they did a little touch-up work or something like that, it was painted different. It would look a lot better. So, of course, looking at this 40th anniversary He-Man body with the cross armor off, the question would be, is this Thunder Punch armor setup going to fit? Now, we know those arm pieces well because it's the same exact arms all the Masterverse He-Man or figures has. So, I'm not going to get involved in that. Um, I'm just going to throw it over the body with the head off because we got to remove the head. And let's see, you can, for the most part, not really. Nope. No, it's not even. You get almost one side on, but the other can't. All right, so moving forward once again. Next up, classics, right? So, yeah, now, of course, I put the head back on. The Thunder Punch He-Man. We have both of the armor pieces off, both figures. A couple shirtless muscle dudes and competition going on. Um, but, you know, for people not familiar, you just want to see a comparison. Once again, between the classics, aesthetics, height, and Masterverse. And there you go. Kind of see the cuts. And there's pros and cons of both of them with articulation, cuts versus this. I love the classics, you know, that design. For me, it's vintage nostalgia. It's like the origins growing up, you know, or something. Vintage, of course. That's what they were inspired at, you know, after. I never liked this cut design. I thought that was weird. Um, I do like the bigger aesthetics and the biceps and things and the single joint. But, you know, you don't exactly have the articulation a Masterverse has. They have longer legs, you know, things like that. Anyway, so now the question would be, is this going to fit the classics figures for the armor and the heads? Now... Yeah, you can put classics heads on Masterverse and vice versa. One's tighter than the other and one's too loose. And I showed that in my other videos. Um, this He-Man is too tan. So I don't think I'm going to bother with the heads. And this one's too light. So I don't know. I don't think it's going to look right on his body. But let's try the... All right, so the armor on this classics figure and these arm pieces. Now, with the classics, you can't really get the hands off. You can, but... They're notorious for breaking. They don't. They weren't really meant to come out early figures like the Masterverse are. So I'm going to try to put these on and yeah, let's set them up. See what that looks like. Okay, and there's a look with that Masterverse Thunder Punch Heyman armor on a classic body. Fits perfect. Um, but now these arm pieces are yeah, they're they're not going on so well. Um, because of large biceps, which I love that in this figure. So they can slip over the hands. It was a little tight. Just push the thumb in. Um, these pieces have to see. It has to go up between the bicep and the tricep. Uh, I think if you heated it really good, you can probably stretch it on. But then once I overstretch it and it cools, I don't know if it's, how it's going to fit my Masterverse figure anymore. So I would say it's totally possible, but it's one of those things I'm not going to mess with. A little customs, you can do it. For the most part, not not that easy. But the armor fits perfect. And then the Thunder Punch, you know, these effects as far as the hand. And you can kind of... And you got to force it on, see it doesn't fit right. It's one of those things you got to mess around with. It is totally possible to classics figure. You want to go into customization, heat and stretch and stuff. So, yeah. All right, so moving forward once again. Of course, I had to bring in the Orge's he Thunder Punch He-Man against our uh, Masterverse Thunder Punch He-Man. Now, yeah, I just left the hands off and that other piece because I'm going to use it on the Origins. Um, so that's those two together. So, yeah, the Origins had his own unique armor, right? It's the front and the back. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll try this one on the Masterverse. I don't... I, this one's better, but that's those two together, and let's see what parts we can mix and match. And there we go. So I do have the Masterverse armor on, the Origins He-Man body. It fits perfect. And these um, cybernetic uh, exoskeleton enhancement arm pieces. Yeah, they did work. I did have to force them a little bit on the bicep. They did go on a little easier in the classics. Um, maybe applied heat, they would go up more. But again, they're really stretching out. But if you want, it's totally possible. And the arms can someone articulate. And that's pretty cool because now you can use the um, the shield 
on these pieces where it doesn't have a handle. So, okay, there we go. Is that set up? So we got an Origins He-Man set up with the arm enhancements, the backpack. I just left his head on for now. And that shield. That's awesome. And it, yeah, it brings the Origins up another notch. And then, of course, with the same setup, you could just remove the mass of our shield. And this uses um iconic shield that the Origins, this Thunder Punch He-Man comes with. So see, this one's like back metal. Um, a lot more simple, but it does, yeah, it has the handle on the back. And this is a custom out Kalahar sword that's actually meant for the classics with the translucent yellow color, which is pretty cool. So I used that for him. He also came with a gold sword. And just put this in the hand. And now, there's a look with that setup. All right, so obviously I removed his uh, shield and sword. I put this set up in the back of the backpack like that goes on a Masterverse you want to. And I used the Masterverse Thunder Punch effects on the Origins hands. And uh, yeah, they also fit well and work cool. So I got that set up, man. That's awesome for Origins He-Man. And now for one last setup with the Origins He-Man. So yeah, I put that Masterverse head on his body. The skin tone works perfect under my lights. Articulates well, looks good. Again, brings this uh, figure up to another notch as far as the body. Just a little more realism. Kept one of the Thunder Punch, you know, effects in, yeah, in the right hand. We have the arm enhancements on. Put a shield back in, in his, uh, the one that the, you know, Origins He-Man come with. Sword, shield, and hand. Um, kept the armor on and just kept the other sword and shield back. So he's, uh, yeah, he's really souped up. And now jumping back to the Thunder Punch Masterverse body once again. So yeah, I have his head on. I put the Origins inspired Thunder Punch armor on. For some people might like that with the strap system. And just, yeah, more nostalgia going back to the figure. It's a little more simple, but it's a decent sculpt for what it is. I put his arm enhancements on. Um, this is the Thunder Punch effect from the origin, so it does work on that hand. It gives a little something different compared to these. They're both cool. And of course, I use the origin's um shield in his hand because he can grab it, being it has a you know a grip, and I kept the sword in hand. But now we don't have that plug in if you wanted to put this piece on the back. But again, it's a armor, it's a different armor doing a different thing. But if you like that setup, and then of course with the same setup, I had to throw the Origins Vintage Inspired He-Man head on a Masterverse body with all you know with everything set up the way it is. Um, doesn't look bad. It's a little simple in the eyes. The skin tone is not bad as far as the way it matches this body and different heads. They're all different depending on which He-Man Vintage Inspired head you get from what pack. Um, would have been better with this He-Man had some white in the eyes and stuff like that, a little darker shades in the hair. And then it would add a little more realism. But, you know, you can always add those details on the hair and eyes and make it work and articulates well. And now, moving forward, a couple more comparisons and finish the video up. So, here's a comparison between our new Thunder Punch He-Man against the new um, Cyclone. So, these are both part of the Wave 13 series, right? And I just reviewed Cyclone yesterday. Um, not only do I want to show these two in comparison because they had a part of Wave 13. A uh, couple points with Cyclone. So if you checked out my review, or maybe there's other reviews out there. Yeah, mine has a crack up in the lens here, right? Part of Radar Dish, which is unfortunate. And I heard two other people that also got these Cyclone figures in hand early from like eBay and stuff. Also have cracks in like the bottom and off to the side, someone said. So yeah, it's a little, um, makes me a little nervous with this figure. Because that's three people that got these in hand early. And there's quite a few floating around on eBay that got... These, uh, you know, they receive these ones with cracked domes like that. That's, uh, it's an issue. And the other thing, too, is this, um, energy shield with the fire effects. It, I got a few comments. I go through everything with the figures, but I got a couple comments going, you know, these can go up like the rings that goes back to the Origins figure. And, um, yeah, I originally I filmed that and I just, I had to cut it in editing because of, of like a pop sound and I didn't refilm it again, but that's the only thing I didn't show. So yeah, it doesn't go on a shield and stick up. They didn't really do much a side effect. It's not like they can really go around the body like the Origins or Classic String does. And in my review, I was trying to adapt the Origins ring around the body, but just to show it out, yeah, I'm familiar to, that they do that. And I, um, I just cut it out in editing, but anyway, that's those two together. And then lastly, here's a comparison with Thunder Punch Heeman against the Wave 13 Leech figure, which really cool design, but very short. That's a big complaint. And even with the drop joints that I discovered later, because in my review too, I didn't, they were stuck. See how, wow, tight they are. And I was messing around with heat them up and they come out. So it does help raise the height. You do have a gap in here now. Not too bad. You can always hide it with something. And it does bring the height up. But um, yeah, He-Man and the other figures like Cyclone are just, they uh, tower over him now. I don't know, Cyclone. I think I did this in my Cyclone review. Yeah, he kind of matches. He's close to Cyclone now. He-Man's just tall, even with the head. But anyway, that's those two together if you're curious. Okay, so that's my overall review in the new Master Universe, New Eternia, Thunder Punch He-Man. I think he's awesome. Uh, I really, I love everything about this figure. I like that you get the new larger body style, going back to the Revolution He-Man. 
That armor is really cool looking. It works on the classics, um, works on the Origins grade. The shield is nice. I wish it was vac metal, but it's not. And it would have been cool if it had an adapter for handle. So if you want to hold it in hand, not use these, these enhancement pieces on the arms, you could. Not a big deal. It's just its own setup. I like the gold sword. Again, I would like to see a translucent yellow one too. Not a big deal. The little fake cap ring thing is pretty neat. Yeah, it would have been awesome if he uh, actually had a um, action feature put third-party caps in them. I didn't see that happening, but all right. You know, it is what it is. These energy effects are cool too. And then you get two of them from each hand. Um, and I really like the head sculpt off that faker. I think it looks great. A lot better than promotional images. It works on different bodies like I showed. Um, the Origins and again, Revolution He-Man. And other heads work on this body good as I showed if you want to try it out. A cool design. I'm really happy with it, you know. So hopefully this answers everybody's questions. I appreciate everybody watching. Until next time, take care.